If you have been on the pathway and doing work on yourself for some time, does that mean you have nothing else to do? Are you really going to sit on your laurels and rest? Or do you realize that this inner work is a lifetime occupation, and once you start, you never really stop? You can hit plateaus and take vacations, but basically it's a lifetime's worth of work. You may want to ask yourself what areas you still need to work on and what you need. Are you healthy? Are you happy? Are you prosperous? Are you creatively fulfilled? Do you feel safe? Do you feel secure? Are you loved? Limitations learned from the past. There is an expression I love, the totality of possibilities. I learned it from one of my early teachers in New York, Eric Pace. It always gave me such a taking-off place for letting my mind go beyond what I thought possible, far beyond the limited beliefs I grew up with when I was young. Being a child, I didn't understand that the passing criticisms of grown-ups and friends were just the result of a bad day or a small disappointment and really weren't true. I accepted these thoughts and beliefs about myself willingly and they became part of my limitations. I may not have looked awkward or dumb or silly, but I sure felt it. Most of us create the ideas we believe about life by the time we are five years old. We add a little bit more when we are teenagers, and maybe a tiny bit more when we're older, but very little. If I were to ask most people why they believe such and such on any subject, and they trace it back, they would discover that they made a certain decision about the subject by the time they were this young age. So we often live in the limitations of our five-year-old consciousness. It was something we accepted from our parents, and we still live under the limitations of our parents' consciousness. Even the most wonderful parents in the world didn't know everything and had their own limitations. We say what they said and do what they did. You can't do that or that won't work. However, we don't need limitations, as important as they may seem. Some of our beliefs may be positive and nourishing. These thoughts serve us very well all of our lives, such as look both ways before you cross the street, or fresh fruits and vegetables are good for your body. Other thoughts may be useful at a young age, but as we grow older, they are no longer appropriate. Don't trust strangers, for instance, may be good advice for a small child. As adults, to perpetuate this belief only creates isolation and loneliness. The good news in all of this is that we can always make adjustments all the time. The moment we say, I can't, or it won't work, or there's not enough money, or what would the neighbors think, we are limited. This last expression is a significant obstacle for us. What will the neighbors or my friends or co-workers or whoever think? It's a good excuse. Now we don't have to do it because they wouldn't do it and they wouldn't approve. As society changes, what the neighbors think changes also. So to hold on to this assumption doesn't make sense. If someone says to you, nobody has ever done it this way before, you can say, so what? There are hundreds of ways of doing something, so do it the way that's right for you. We tell ourselves other absurd messages, such as, I'm not strong enough, or I'm not young enough, or I'm not old enough, or I'm not tall enough, or I'm not the right sex. How often have you used the last one? Because I'm a woman, I can't do this, or because I'm a man, I can't do that. Your soul has no sexuality. I believe you agreed upon your sexuality before you were born to learn a spiritual lesson. To feel inferior because of sexuality is not only a poor excuse, but also another way to relinquish your power. Our limitations often stop us from expressing and experiencing the totality of possibilities. I don't have the right education. How many of us have let that one stop us? 
We want to realize that education is something set up by groups of people who say you can't do such and such unless you do it our way. We can accept that as a limitation or we can go beyond it. I accepted it for many, many years because I was a high school dropout. I used to say, oh, I don't have any education. I can't think. I can't get a good job. I can't do anything well. And then one day I realized that the limitation was all in my mind and had nothing to do with reality. When I dropped my own limiting beliefs and I allowed myself to move into the totality of possibilities, I discovered that I could think. I discovered that I was very bright and I could communicate. I discovered all sorts of possibilities which when viewed from the limitations of the past seemed impossible. Limiting the potential within us. Then there are some of you who think you know it all. The trouble with knowing it all is that you don't grow and nothing new can come in. Do you accept that there is a power and an intelligence greater than you? Or do you think that you are it, you in your physical body? If you think that you're it, then you will be running scared because of your limited mind. If you realize that there is a power in this universe that is far greater and wiser and you are part of it, then you can move into the space where the totality of possibilities can operate. How often do you allow yourself to dwell in the limitations of your present consciousness? Every time you say, I can't, you're putting a stop sign in front of you. You shut down the door to your own inner wisdom and you block the flow of energy that is your spiritual knowingness. Are you willing to go beyond what you believe today? You woke up this morning with certain concepts and ideas. You have the ability to move beyond some of them to experience a far greater reality. It's called learning because you are taking in something new. It may fit in with what is already there or it may be even better. Have you ever noticed that when you start rearranging your closet, you discard clothes and odds and ends that you no longer need? You pile up the possessions you are giving away on one side and throw or give away the stuff that is no longer usable. Then you begin to put everything back and in a totally different order. It's easier to find what you're looking for, and at the same time, you make room for new clothes. If you bought a new outfit and put it in the old closet, you may have had to jam it between other stuff. If you clean out your closet and rearrange it, then when you bring in the new outfit, it has room for itself. We need to do the same routine with our minds. We need to clean out the contents that no longer work so we have room for new possibilities. Where God is, all things are possible, and God is in each one of us. If we continue with our preconceived ideas, then we are blocked. When someone is ill, do you say, Oh, poor person, how he or she must be suffering? Or do you look at the person and see the absolute truth of being? and affirm the health of God that is within. Do you see the totality of possibilities and know that miracles can happen? A man I once met told me very emphatically that it was absolutely impossible for a grown person to change. He was living in the desert and had all sorts of illnesses and he wanted to sell his property. He didn't want to change his thinking so he was very rigid when it came time to negotiate with a buyer. It had to be done his way. It was apparent that he would have a very burdensome time trying to sell his property because his belief was that he could never change. All he had to do was open his consciousness to a new way of thinking. Expanding our horizons how do we keep ourselves from moving into this totality of possibilities? What else limits us? All our fears are limitations. 
If you are frightened and you say, I can't, it won't work, what will happen? Fearful experiences will come back. Judgments are limitations. None of us like to be judged, yet how often do we do it? We are encouraging limitations by our judgments. Every time you find yourself judging or criticizing, no matter how small, remind yourself that what goes out comes back. You may want to stop limiting your possibilities and change your thinking to something wonderful. There is a difference between being judgmental and having an opinion. Many of you are asked for your opinion of something. In actuality, you are really giving your judgment. An opinion is how you feel about something, such as I prefer not to do this, I prefer to wear red instead of blue. To say someone else is wrong because she wears blue becomes a judgment. We need to discern between the two. Remember, criticism is always making yourself or someone else wrong. If someone asks your opinion, your preference, don't let it become a judgment or criticism against something else. Also, every time you indulge in guilt, you are setting a limitation. If you hurt someone, say you're sorry and don't hurt the person again. Don't walk around feeling guilty because it keeps you locked out from experiencing your good and has nothing to do with the reality of your true being. When you are unwilling to forgive, you limit your growth. Forgiveness allows you to right a wrong in your spiritual self, to have understanding instead of resentment, to have compassion instead of hatred. Look at your problems as opportunities for you to grow. When you have problems, do you see only the restrictions of your limited mind thinking? Do you think, oh, poor me, why did this happen to me? You don't always have to know how situations are going to work out. You do need to trust the power and presence within, which is far greater than you are. You need to affirm that all is well and everything is working out for your highest good. If you open yourself to the possibilities when you have problems, you can make changes. Changes can happen in incredible ways, perhaps ways you could not even imagine. We've all been in situations in our lives where we've said, I don't know how I'll work this out. It seemed like we were up against a brick wall, and yet we are all here now, and we've worked through whatever it was. Maybe we didn't understand how it happened, yet it did happen. The more we can align ourselves with the cosmic energy, the one intelligence, the truth and power within us, the quicker those wonderful possibilities can be realized. We are reaching new levels of spirituality. We are beginning to connect with one another on higher levels of consciousness. Every time you use your consciousness in a positive way, you are connecting with other people who are doing the same. Every time you use it in a negative way, you are also connecting to that. Every time you meditate, you are connecting with other people on the planet who are meditating. Every time you visualize good for yourself, you do it for others as well. Every time you visualize the healing of your body, you connect with others who are doing the same thing. Our goals are to expand our thinking and to go beyond what was to what might be. Our consciousness can create miracles in the world. The totality of possibilities connects everything, including our universe and beyond. What are you connecting with? Prejudice is a form of fear. If you're prejudiced, you are connecting with other prejudiced people. If you open your consciousness and do the best you can to work on a level of unconditional love, then you connect with the curve on the graph that is climbing upwards. Do you want to be left behind, or do you want to go up with the curve? Often there is a crisis in the world. How many people send positive energy to the troubled area and do affirmations that everything works out as quickly as possible 
and there is a solution for the highest good of all concerned. You need to use your consciousness in a way that will create harmony and plenty for all people. What sort of energy are you sending? Instead of condemning and complaining, you can connect with the power on the spiritual level and affirm the most positive results imaginable. How far are you willing to expand the horizons of your thinking? Are you willing to go beyond your neighbors? If your neighbors are limited, make new friends. How far will you stretch? How willing are you to change I can't to I can? Every time you hear that something is incurable, know in your mind that it isn't true. Know that there is a power greater. Incurable to me means that the medical profession simply hasn't yet figured out how to cure that particular illness. It doesn't mean that it's not possible. It means that we go within and find a cure. We can go beyond statistics. We are not numbers on a chart. Those are someone else's projections somebody's limited mind thinking. If we don't give ourselves possibilities, we don't give ourselves hope. Dr. Donald Picciuto at the National AIDS Conference in Washington, D.C. said that we have never had an epidemic, ever, that was 100% fatal. Somewhere on this planet, someone has been healed of every single dis-ease that we have been able to create. If we just accept doom and gloom, we are stuck. We need to take a positive approach so we can find some answers. We need to begin to use the power within us to heal ourselves. Everything is possible. Repeat with me. I live and dwell in the totality of possibilities. Where I am, there is all good. Think about these words for a minute. All good. Not some, not a little bit, but all good. When you believe that anything is possible, you open yourself up to answers in every area of your life. Where we are is the totality of possibilities. It is always up to us, individually and collectively. We either have walls around us or we take them down and feel safe enough to be totally open to allow all good to come into our lives. Begin to observe yourself. Notice what is going on inside you, how you feel, how you react, what you believe, and allow yourself to observe without comment or judgment. When you can, you will live your life from the totality of possibilities. For more updates, subscribe to our channel, click the show links and enjoy watching the videos.